Hey everyone, in this video I'll be covering some of the non-generation features of Retrodiffusion. Uh, so that means things like palletize, remove background, and k-centroid resize. I'll, I'll obviously, you know, explain what that means as we go on here. All of the features shown off are available in both the full and light versions of Retrodiffusion. Of course, if you're interested in the tool and don't have it yet, check out the description for links to the product page and you can read more about it there. So I'm going to start off with background removal. So here I've got this, you know, image of a car and to start, we're just going to go to Sprite and click remove background. So this has a couple settings associated with it. Uh, at the top here, we have this clean image, um, remove transparent pixels checkbox. And what this means is when it goes to remove the background, um, some of the objects, it might decide like, uh, maybe you have a thing that's transparent, like this this little window section here, and it might look at that and go, okay, uh, I'm gonna you know remove that, but I'm gonna try and leave some of the the pixels there at a lower transpar uh, a lower opacity, just so that there's something there still. You know, there might be uh, fading around the edge and that kind of thing. Uh, a lot of the time, I recommend just you know keeping this checked, and what that does is it removes those pixels. So anything that's under a certain threshold, it will just completely get rid of. And that's this, this alpha threshold here. Uh, for this, we're actually going to turn that off and just, you know, remove the background from the whole image. Uh, so there are a couple of other settings. Uh, we've got the processing cells, which is all layers and all frames. And this is just so that like, if you have uh, a whole bunch of layers with different content on them or a whole bunch of frames or both, you could check these boxes and it would remove the background from all of those all at once. So I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna make a selection here and that's the entire canvas selected. That was control A, that's just a, a hotkey in a sprite that you can use to select everything. And I'm gonna click okay. So that's gonna open up the uh, retro diffusion dialog here, process the image and give it back to us. And so now we've got this, you know, image of that car with the background removed. And you can see we have those little transparent pixels that I was talking about. And in this case, we you know, wanted that, and that's the, the option that we chose. So now we have this separated from the background. And this works at pretty much any size. It's really fast, even on you know slower hardware, uh, which is great. So that just works for getting rid of backgrounds on things. Sometimes it has a little trouble detecting uh, finer details or uh, things with a, a kind of cartoon style to them. It can be a little bit tricky, but for the most part, it gets the job done and it'll save you a lot of time trying to remove things manually. So now I'm just going to go back to that original image that we had and move on to the next tool, which is Palletize. So the Palletize tool you can find right here under Sprite again. And what this is designed for is reducing the colors in an image. Uh, so this image is actually a little large, but we'll, we'll work with it anyways. So first off, the default is this automatic um, palette source. And what that's going to do is it's going to use the image's own colors, and it's going to try and find uh, a good balance between reducing the colors a lot and retaining the detail that's in the image. So if I just select this whole thing and click OK, you can see we get back this image with a whole lot of, or a whole lot less colors. So if I, if I go up here and click new palette from Sprite, we can actually see how many there are. We can see that it reduced the colors down to a total of 42 when originally this image had millions of different colors. And you can see that the uh, the detail that we have is still pretty solid between these two different images. Not a whole lot changes. We do lose some of the greens, but that's not a terrible thing. So besides the uh, automatic tool we have there, we can also go over to, let's try adaptive next. So with adaptive, you can actually set the exact number of colors that you want. And we'll go with 
12, just to, to really cut down the number of colors that we're using. So you can see that crushed the whole image down to the 12 major colors. And again, if I run that uh, new palette from Sprite, we can see all those different colors that it decided to keep. Moving on from that, um, we can also, now we can look at this uh, next setting here, the dithering settings. So we have a something called a matrix size here, and it's using the Bayer dithering algorithm. Um, and this is basically just um, a way of trying to fade colors into each other without actually adding new colors to a palette. So we're going to keep this set at 8x8 for now, and I'll show you kind of what it does. Um, this dither strength determines how much dithering the image is going to have. So if we set that all the way up to 5, it should have uh, a decent amount. Yeah, so now you can see we have these little like checkerboard patterns. And this has a distinct look to it. And it's also used in a lot of older pixel art games. So if I go back here with those same settings, but I change the matrix size to two by two, you can see that the pattern is slightly different. So that matrix size just determines sort of the, the shape that you're going to be creating with that little checkerboard pattern. I'm going to set that uh, to none and the dithering strength down to zero. The next setting we have here is the denoise post-processing setting. And this is just a way of removing some of the uh, random little pixel details that you get. Um, so if I just leave these at the, uh, the default setting there and run it, you can see that in addition to removing a lot of the colors, it also removed a lot of the uh, single pixel, um, little orphan pixels is, is what we call them. And it got rid of those and sort of smoothed out the image a bit. Now, moving back to the palette source, uh, we can choose this palette source, which is best palette. And what you do here is you're going to want to put a whole lot of different palette images in a single folder. And then you can actually select that folder and it will try to find the best fit for uh, this image from that choice of different palettes in the folder. That can be really useful if maybe you're working on a game that uses a few different color palettes and you want to narrow it down to just one. Active palette. Uh, this source just uses whatever palette you have selected over here. So if I click OK on this, we're going to see that'll process. And now the entire image has been reduced to only the colors that we have in this palette bar on the side. Uh, you also have the defaults, and this is just the default palettes included in a sprite. And you can select from this little drop down list which one you want to use. There's also file, and for this you can actually open up, uh, I believe, pretty much any image file, and it should be able to grab the palette from it. There's also a URL setting, and for this you actually want the link to a direct uh, PNG file hosted online somewhere and that will let you just directly use the palette from online. Uh, like in this case, it's linked to the AAP64 color palette from lowspec.com. And if I click OK here, it'll just run through and reduce the image down to those colors. That pretty much covers uh, all of the things in Palletize. There's also, of course, this uh, processing cells section where you know, if you had multiple layers or multiple frames, you could choose to process all of them at once, which can be really, really helpful. Um, for the most part, Palletize is fantastic for uh, just changing the colors of an image, 
especially maybe you've generated something and it's not quite in the colors you want. Maybe your game has a, a set color palette or you're working on an art piece that has a, a limited number of colors. And you can use palletize to help mathematically reduce that down to something either just usable out of the box or that can be really easily tuned to, uh, to what you want. So beyond just you know, color changing stuff, we also have this case centroid resize. Um, now case centroid resize, it can't go larger than base. So it will always only be uh, smaller. This is a, a downscaling algorithm. The reason it's called case centroid is because it's based on a, a, math, a mathematical concept of, of K means. Um, and basically, the way you can think about that is, so you've got little clusters of information and those K means uh, try and find the centers of those groups of information, of, of similar information. And the way that we're using that for downscaling is just using it to, to kind of detect the color that we want. Anyway, uh, regardless of how it works, we can just type in a size here. Um, and in this case, we also have this preserve outlines option. And what preserve outlines does is when it scales things down, like say you've got this, this black line here, normally that might get just completely erased when you downscale it, but preserve outlines would actually expand that to try and make it larger. So it stays in the uh, processed image. I'm actually going to uncheck that for now and just go down to this, this new size that we have. Yeah, so there's that resized image. If I go back to the original here and run a resize again with that preserve outlines checked, takes a little bit longer. Oh, my bad. I, I uh, put the settings wrong for that one. If we actually change the size like we're supposed to, <laughs> it goes down and you can see that those lines have been preserved a lot better. Hopefully this helps explain some of the cleanup tools available in Retrodiffusion and lets you take full advantage of them for whatever artistic process you have. Personally, I really like to use palletize and remove background, especially for you know cleaning up colors and things or even swapping around to different colors and obviously for removing the backgrounds of things. Either to use as input images like Maybe in the case of this car, I want to take this and use that as the input for something, but I don't want to have all of this background stuff confusing it. Or if I have an output and, you know, I want to just have the character or the main focus. Don't forget to leave a like on the video and, of course, share Retrodiffusion with anyone you think could make use of it. I mean, that's the, the whole point of this, this software is to make the lives of developers and artists a whole lot easier by simplifying some of the more tedious pieces of asset creation. If you have a, a specific feature that you've got questions about or a suggestion for a tutorial video that I should make, just leave a comment and let me know. Thanks for watching.